908, 8 past 9. Jake Hartford and John Cass. I'm the uh, scientific one in the Paisley uh, vest, and uh, Jake is the uh, man of action. This is the Wild West train show. And we're ready to take a voyage with our politicians on a big, fast super train. I'm excited today, John. Everybody in the state of Illinois should be excited. Let's just let release the the white doves and the balloons, my friend. If I can be on this train today, I'd be on it. Uh, today, uh, there's going to be a demonstration of the Amtrak route between Chicago and St. Louis, where they're doing a test run. The train will hit 110 miles per hour. You think mean, about that. Just think, if you open the window, will you get sucked out? You're not taking this so. seriously, are you? No, no, I am taking it very seriously. I think it's a very, it's a great thing because I think we have political people on that train, and it's going to go 110 miles an hour. Dick Durbin's going to be on the plane. Governor Pat Quinn's going to be on the on the train. Secretary of the uh, Transportation Ray LaHood's going to be on the on that train. And for the 15 mile stretch between Dwight and Pontiac, the train will hit 110 miles per hour, and then from there on, it's going to go back to its regular maximum of about 75 or 80. And uh, this is to promote what exactly? High-speed rail. At 110 miles an hour. 619,000 people this past year have traveled between Chicago and St. Louis on the train. I, I would imagine that's, you know, half of that is going, half coming back. However, because I hate to see all 619,000 going to St. Louis and none coming back because then they'd have empty trains coming back. That's how it happens. Once you go to St. Louis, you don't want to come back. You never come back. Well, they're gonna, they have more work to do. The normal run between Union Station and St. Louis uh, takes about five hours. They think by going to 110 miles per hour, they will knock an hour off the trip, and it'll put it down to about four hours. So it's only a four-hour trip. It will be, eventually. Not including, you know, parking in the Union Station, getting your bags on. It's about, it's about 300 miles between Chicago and St. Louis. So just do the math, John. Does the guy say all aboard? If you want him to say all aboard, he'll say all aboard. Is that what you want? I do want that. Uh yeah, this is exciting because what happens when this thing is eventually done because they have to redo a lot of track and, and reinforce some premium ties and, and places on curves that support the speed of 110. They have to do that type of work. But when it's all said and done, it's going to take four hours to go between Chicago and St. Louis. And some points, I think what's going to happen, it's going to be when it leaves Union Station, uh-huh. it's going to get up to 110 in about three blocks. And it's just going to zoom through the Chicago track system, right? knocking whatever is in its way out of the way. Okay, so it's not going to hit 110 right away. It's going to take a while to crawl out of Chicago. And then it'll, but once it gets into the plains. Once it hits 110 miles per hour, yes, sir. Then it'll go fast for a few minutes. And this is only costing us a billion and a half dollars. You know what? Isn't that great? Only a billion and a half, or something like that, to shave some time off your off your off your trip to St. Louis. Wow! I know they never heard of flying, but it, not everybody can driving. fly. Not everybody can. Well, here is the deal: if you look at what it costs to do the rail, okay, you are going to say eh, it's not worth the money because Amtrak gets a federal subsidy every year of about a about one and a half billion dollars. Because they have operating losses of close to five hundred million, and there's money when it whatever, it gets complicated. But critics will say, who are in favor of rail service, will say, you know what, we put more money into roads than we do rail. Right. So if you didn't put money in the roads, and people quit driving, more people would take the train. If we didn't put money into roads, then the guys, the Asphalt Pavers Association, might be upset. So what they need to do, if they really want to get people off the roads, they need to have giant potholes between here and St. Louis on 55. Maybe Every some, so often. Big big sinkholes. Maybe some bandits and marauding savages. So you're not taking this seriously. No, I am. Because Aren't you I excited think, about going 110 I, miles per I, hour on a train? I think that I would like it, you know, like, so if this was a movie, you would have, uh, you know, like learned scientists debating whether or not uh, human beings can actually live at that speed for extended periods of time. Frank in Buffalo Grove. Good morning, Frank. 
Good morning, guys. I have a question that no one seems to want to talk about it. So it's about a billion and a half dollars for this uh, boondoggle, and you're going to save 60 minutes in travel time. How much is that per minute that this is costing? I think that's a big good allocation of our federal dollars, our state dollars. Well, I picked the day in October, just just uh-huh. at random. The cost of the train between Chicago and St. Louis on that day was $67. The cost uh-huh. of flying was $140. Yes. The train takes four hours. It will take four hours once it hits 110, and flying takes an hour. Well, that's good. It's Obviously, it's not, uh, it's not your money coming out of your pocket. It's all of ours. And can I ask you one quick question about, sure. about the Biden thing from two weeks ago? I don't think no one touched on it. I think he mentioned to, to uh, Congressman Ryan, you're no Jack Kennedy. Did he, men- did he say that in that debate? He started to bring up the Kennedy thing, yeah, because, you know, he's such a... No, he was bringing up the fact that he, was not, he, was, he liked Kennedy's policies on taxes. Oh well, he but didn't really, you know. He I, was right. Re- he was right up there with the with the Lloyd Benson. My, my response to uh, Uncle Joe would have been, Mister Vice President, my wife is very glad that I'm not Jack Kennedy. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. And the quote the Vice President from yesterday, and I'll ask, I'll you know, I'll, I'll ask you what he asked the people in his audience yesterday. Harry Reid was there, and a whole bunch of other politicians. Uh, how many of you people are listening to us right now? Know somebody who has served in either Iran or Iraq? Raise your hands. Left hand for Iraq, right hand for Iran. You can put them down now. 9.15, time for WS Traffic right here on 89 WS. All aboard. John Cass, Jay Cartford here talking about the big train. Test run today, 110 miles per hour for about a 15-mile stretch. I could just hope that Dick Durbin can, uh, you know, withstand the speed. Because the idea of Dick Durbin going that fast, you know, you think maybe his face might start jiggling a little bit. I couldn't take it. Now, there are some uh, people in the rail industry who say in order to make the route between Chicago and St. Louis uh, pay for itself and be popular, they're going to have to have trains maybe running every hour. They have to really beef up the schedule. And number two, they'd have to get the time down to about three hours. And those are people in the rail industry. And what about... If you live near a curve, I'm just thinking, you know, you have a- the stress on that curvy track, you know, after a while, sooner or later, it's going to fly off, right? Uh, Tina, good morning, Tina. Good morning to my two most favorite people on the air. Tina, do you have a billion dollars to spend? <laughs> So you can get I can remember when I couldn't count to, a, I couldn't even fathom a billion. Uh-huh. I was trying to just get through a million, and now we're into trillions. <laughs> nice. However, this summer I went down to Carlinville, which is about 50 miles south of Springfield. And when I got to the train station, I had to take a bus because of the construction. And I got to Carlinville over a half hour early. It was more than a half hour early as it pulled into the station. When I made my return back home, I was two hours and ten minutes late arriving in Joliet. Because of what? Uh, they, They really couldn't explain it. However, we had a very entertaining conductor. John would have loved him. He was just great. He was He was fun. He, he kept saying, we're not sure when we're going to get there, but we are going to get there. So what you're saying is, you're, even though you were late, you, your speed still averaged 80 miles per hour coming back. Uh, no. <laughs> Thank not you. even close. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> See, the thing is, on those long train rides, um, I think it's called scotch and soda, and it helps. Uh, Rob on the northwest side, good morning. Yeah, I have a silly-ass question, pardon me. Well, then I'll give that one to how John. Much, then. Yes, how because much I'm the fuel? serious one. How much fuel can you buy for a million and a half? Not to mention whatever the cost overruns were for this project, because they're not going to tell us those costs. Listen, Rob, I really was bad at word problems, okay? So make it simple. Here, no, no, I, I'll give you the answer to that, Rob, because John's just going to ignore you. Uh, it, it's not about the fuel per se. What it does, though, by getting people out of their cars and onto the train you will save the carbon dioxide emissions. 
That's what oh, it's about. Really? Yes. Really? Isn't, isn't that yes. a good thing? See, your, your carpet. Oh, see? I, I stumped him because I actually knew something. He your was surprised. Car- you're the serious one in this conversation, but the, <laughs> the obviously, but the uh, carbon footprint would decrease, would it not? That's the argument. It's going right? to take. Yeah, it's going to take so many million pounds of emissions out of the air. Now, in related Amtrak news story, uh, the budget this, and I talked about this a few months ago, and people scoffed at me and I said, "Wait, till the actual audit report comes out." Well, the audit report came out this week. Over the past ten years. Concessions on Amtrak, the sales, somehow they have lost $833 million over 10 years. That's right. They lost $833 million over 10 years. I always joke about, you know, politicians, they they don't know how to operate an ice cream stand. They should try that first. I don't know how you lose $833 million selling hamburgers and soda, but they do. For example... A two, they charge two dollars for for a, a can of soda, correct? On the train. Now I know what the wholesale price of the soda is. It's like what ten cents? No, it's like a half a buck. Over they, a can. They yeah, yeah, they charge two bucks. It costs them three dollars and forty five cents. They lose money on every can of soda they sell. A hamburger, a simple hamburger. Cost them sixteen dollars and fifteen cents. They must have, you and know, they some, charge, and they charge, of course, like six bucks for it. So somebody might know somebody who buys the the produce and the hamburgers. No, they're just mismanaged. You don't think so? They're huh? just mismanaged. Sounds like a scam to me. There's no scam. They ju- they're just mismanaged. Sixteen dollars for a hamburger? That's their cost. That's what it costs them to do to it. To buy it, probably all the regulations on the beef. Well, but that's but you know what. People in business every day, the local hamburger place, uh, they have to be in business, and they have to, they have to keep their co- costs down. You don't see them selling ham, you know, hamburgers costing them 16 bucks to make and selling them for 25 bucks. I'm genetically disposed to understand that you can make a living selling hamburgers. Okay? I know. It can't be done. All my people. 921, back after this. Do you want to dip a size your meal for a quarter more? Want me to punch a size your face for free? 89. 89 WLS is breaking news, comprehensive coverage, and revealing insight. Chicago's talk leader, 89 WLS. Jake and John back in for Bruce and Dan talking about the uh, train test today that's going to get up to 110 miles between Chicago and St. Louis for about a 15-mile stretch. Kathy, we're going to give you the last word. Okay. Go ahead, Kathy. Hi. um, Well... I used to live in D.C., and I used to use Amtrak all the time on the Eastern Corridor. It's amazing. I mean, it was a little expensive, like $100 Manhattan, but fast, always on time. I've moved to Chicago, and my folks live in Champaign, so occasionally I'll take the train down to, to Champaign to see them. And it's never on time. I mean, very friendly people, but never on time. And I found out it's because they don't own the track here in central Illinois or anywhere outside the Eastern Corridor. So every time there's a freight train, they have to pull over for the freight train to go by. It's only a two. It's only a two-hour trip. I know, but it ends up being a three-hour trip. <laughs> Kathy, I would drive if I were you. Just get in a car. I know, but but John, as you said, maybe you want your scotch and soda. Yes. Okay. So on the, in those rare occasions, if it's single malt, I would say take the train. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Thanks. A hundred-mile trip, three hours. That's thirty miles an hour on the train. Yeah, that's efficient. I'm just thinking of. Dick Durbin's face stretching out, you know, like with the G-forces, and it's scaring me. Oh, you're scaring me today, Come that's on, what man. you're thinking about. Uh, 9.30, time for Dave Stewart with news weather traffic right here on 89 WLS. Weather happens. Turn to 89 WLS.